Jogger, northwesterly four. Fisher, German bike, northwesterly three, backing southwesterly four. Rockin' Wakes by John Wyndham. Dramatized for radio by John Constable. Mm. Thank God for that breeze. Mm. So, Mrs. Watson, how is it for you so far? Well, Mr. Watson. I don't know about marriage, but when it comes to honeymoons, I never expect to have a better. <laughs> oh, I couldn't have put it better myself. Well, darling, I am the writer. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Mars is looking a bit angry tonight, isn't he? I hope it isn't an omen. Mm. Certainly, a little inflamed. <laughs> That's funny seems to be getting bigger. Look, there's another. There can't be two Marses. And another to the left, see? What the... Look at those lights! It must be a flight of jets or some kind of electrical disturbance in the atmosphere. What, you mean like St. Elmo's fire? No, look, they're getting closer. They look like saucers. Uh, kind of cigar shape. Five now, coming right at us. Oh, my! Captain, what the hell's going on? No alarm, sir. We're changing course to search for survivors. <laughs> survivors? Captain, those things were red hot when they hit the wall. Captain, Mike Watson, EBC News. You mean BBC? Uh, no, Captain, with the commercial rivals. Stand by to man lifeboats. I'd like to radio a report. We all heard the hissing and steaming as the fireballs plunged into the sea, yet no two witnesses seem able to agree exactly what it was they saw. Some inevitably saw flying saucers, Others say they look more like flying cigars. The captain of the Guinevere refused to comment. This is Mike Watson, EBC News, South of the Azores. Tracking station in the north of Finland picked up 13 unidentified craft flying southwest at approximately... Hawaii, Hawaii Lot 6 hour. craft passing directly overhead, just visible to the naked eye of small red dots traveling due west. The U.S. Navy carrier just gave you an open fire on eight so-called fireballs fly north towards Puerto Rico. All of the unidentified craft were reportedly hit and exploded on impact. The other appear to have crashed in the Responsibility sea. lies not with those who shut them down, but with their Russian commanders, who sent them to violate U.S. airspace in flagrant breach of existing international agreements. The United States is merely seeking to divert attention from its own violations of Soviet airspace. The USSR has itself destroyed plenty such craft over Soviet territory and will not hesitate to do the same to any other. Have you seen your mailbag? Flying saucers? Showers of frogs? <laughs> oh yes, we have our share of crackpot listeners and you appear to have flushed out most of them. I was there, Freddy. And since when do hallucinations show up on radar screens? You've got the Americans, the Russians, the Chinese all frantically shooting down each other's fireballs. And still no one squeals. What if no one's squealing because they don't belong to any of us? So what are we saying? They came from outer space? Do us a favour, Mike. Don't let Captain Winters hear you talking like that. These charts are not exactly official secrets. 
However, we would prefer you not to make public use of them just yet. Uh, we understand, Captain. And each of these red dots represents the descent of a fireball. One or more. But there's your contribution. <sighs> Looks like there's a devil of a lot more than even I imagined. Areas of concentration. The Cayman Trench, Mindanao Trench, Mariana Islands. All deep water areas. Exactly. All descents. No reports are coming up. Have you any idea what it all means? Or wouldn't you tell us if you had? Well, on the first part, we have a number of theories, all unsatisfactory. So the second doesn't really arise. What about the Russians? Oh, that's the official version. The fact is, they're even more worried than us. They naturally suspect a capitalist plot, but they can't work out who or what's behind it. And if the Americans were pulling something... We'd know about it, and so would the Kremlin. No, I'm afraid it's not that simple. These fireballs, UFOs, whatever they are, are not terrestrial in origin. You're saying extraterrestrial? Don't quote me on that. The plain truth is, we don't know what they are. They come out of the sky, blow up if we hit them, and if we don't, well, they just seem to splash down and sink to the bottom. Could be thousands of them littering the seabed. The question is, what are they doing down there? God knows. They come, maybe they go, but mainly they come. That's about all. Are you doing anything about it? Or shouldn't I ask? Oh, that's why you're here. We're planning an expedition to the Cayman Trench, and, well, there ought to be a record. Not for broadcast just at the moment, mind, but if... Freddy, we're prepared to send you along with some gear. A Cayman Trench between Jamaica and Cuba. Yeah, one of our hotspots. It looks like you've had hundreds of fireballs splashing down around there. Oh. 237 confirmed sightings. Uh, my wife has a passionate devotion to tropical sunshine. The West Indian kind in particular. <laughs> well, I seem to recall your wife has written some pretty good documentary scripts. This instrument we call the bathoscope. It's been constructed Look at the scent of doubt in that. Shh! It's a theoretical floor of 1,500 fathoms. In practice, we do not propose <coughs> to use it at a greater depth than 1,200 fathoms. I can't think it of this fathoms. What is it in God's feet? They're going down to an, about 7,000. That's my God. Where would I be without you? Uh, Captain, uh, how deep is it around here? Parts of the Cayman Trench go below 5,000. But that's... Fathoms, dear. 30,000 feet. Oh. The instrument dangling beneath the bathoscope is equipped with underwater microphones and cameras. Now, this here instrument we call the telebar. <laughs> In the comedian, eh, Wiseman? Very well. The telebar it is. Now, if you and Mr. Trant would be so good as to climb in the hatch. Aye, sir. Aye, aye, sir. <clears throat> Our two volunteers, Wiseman and Trant, will observe through the portholes and report back via an audio link. They'll be keeping an eye out for any traces of fireballs. You're all set in there. Yeah, bit, bit of a tight squeeze, sir. Close the hatch. Half mile coming up. Check. 438, 39. Now. Half mile, sir. There's a damn great fish looking in the window. 500 fathoms. Trent here, sir. You think the boffins could come up with an electrically heated suit? This is the Navy, sailor. Thermal underwear and a flask of hot tea for you. Aye, aye, sir. 600 fathoms. 700. Trent, hello, are you still there? Wiseman here, sir. You seem to have lost your telebath. Talk to those mics, never take the pressure. The external cameras are still going strong. More life around here. Plenty of squid. Probably see them. Luminous fish. Small shoal there, see? 800 fathoms. Something out there, sir. Something big. Just on the edge of the light. Could be a giant ray, or... But there it is again. I'll try to show you. But there, see? There, got a glimpse of it again. Monstrous-sized brute. Well, it can't be a whale. One mile coming up. Stopping you now. Seems to be 
circling us. We're... Bring them up! Hello, Bathoscope. You're on your way now. Hello? Oh, no, sir. A brute must have bashed into us. Still there. Circling a bit closer. It's going up now. We're rising faster than we are. There ought to be a window on top of this thing. Lost it now. Gone somewhere up above it. It's... Wiseman. Trent. Hello. Hello? Them that are tossed in tempests, and the haven of them that sail. To thee, O Lord, we commend thy servants, wise men, and Trant. We all expected to see the end of the wire rope unraveled, with the strands splayed out, brush-like. They were not. They were melted together. Both cables ended in blobs of fused metal. I'm sorry, but I did warn your husband it wouldn't be for immediate release. Captain, two of your men gave their lives trying to find out what's lurking down there. We may not know what it is, but we can't simply ignore it. It's a great script, Phil, but you can see the captain's position. The crux of the thing is those fused cables. Imagination staggers at the thought of a sea creature capable of snapping through steel hawsers. Let alone cutting through them like an oxyacetylene torch. At that it recoils. It recoils and definitely rejects. We want to know just what sort of a hazard we're dealing with before we give a release. Honestly, Captain Winters, and off the record if you like, have you any idea what can have done it? To be perfectly honest, Mrs Watson, on or off the record... I haven't the foggiest. I'm thinking of the U.S. cruiser, the Keweenaw, in the waters north of Guam. There were no survivors. Announcing an official inquiry, a U.S. The United States regards any attack upon the U.S. fleet by any hostile power as an act of war. And stand ready... The Soviet Union categorically denies any responsibility for the sinking of the U.S. cruiser. The Russian Navy has itself recently lost five ships in the Pacific. The U.S. decision to conduct a series of atomic bomb tests to the east of the Philippines can only be seen as a flagrant provocation. The water around Bikini is too shallow for the proposed series of deep water tests. The test site has Bikini therefore been too shifted shallow. To west of the How Marianas. Ingenuous. Hollywood film star. Marianas. Now, where's my atlas? Oh, forget it, Phil. It's just another bloody atomic bomb test. It's nothing to do with those things under the Marianas, sea. Marianas, Maria, Mariana Islands, page 47. Cold War posturing. The Americans lose a cruiser and proceed to move their test site a thousand miles closer to the prime suspect's backyard. And the Russians, of course, deny all knowledge. Mariana, Marie... Aha! In the Pacific, due east of the Philippines. Look! Marianas? Come to think of it, yes... That was one of the main areas of fireball activity on Captain Winter's chart. Good Lord, and there's Guam. The waters north of Guam. Where the Keweenaw went down. Uh, the Keweenaw report wasn't handled quite the regular way. The whisper is they were testing some new deep-sea probe using ultrawatts. Sonics, dear. Ultrasonics. All very hush-hush. Then there's this stuff about the ship being somehow electrified, that it was crackling with lightning dancing over it before it... Something sank that ship, Mike. And whatever it was, looks like the Americans have decided to have a crack at it. <laughs> Got to give it to you, darling. When it comes to reading the runes... Elementary, my dear Watson. But we'd better move fast. When this gets out, the world and his wife will be scrabbling for places on board the support ship support ship? Oh, wake up, Mike! <laughs> NBC Radio reporting live from aboard the support vessel. From here on deck, I can see the U.S. frigate Redwood sailing less than a hundred yards Meanwhile, away. we're condemned to witness history in the making from the comfort of a beach bar more than 30 miles away. 
What do they mean, no seats on the The ship? Redwood, carrying the second atomic bomb, tried to detonate by pressure and explode at five miles back. And, to add insult to injury, we're forced to listen to their reporter. Along with all our listeners. The bomb, due for release in 30 minutes. We'll soon be changing course to sail clear of the... So NBC gets exclusive coverage. Look on the bright side, we're getting paid to cheer from the sidelines. The first bomb was successfully detonated two days ago. Relax, darling. Try to think of it as a second honeymoon. As you remember. Mm, very romantic. Absolutely. With three tons of radioactive fish rotting on the beach. It's money from here. Who mm. fancy another? Mm, better make it a double. If I can fight my way through this scrum. Excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> Hello, Chapel Miss Spill. <laughs> my, my. Fireball Watson might have guessed you'd been on this junket. Hello, Mallaby. Bloody Yanks. I couldn't get on that support ship for love. Uh -huh. And who is this charming? This man? is my wife. Phil. Uh -huh. I, uh, the feature writer, brains and beauty, eh? Well, congratulations, Watson. Your taste in women has evidently improved. Would you care to join Benel and I for dinner? Uh, I'm sure we'd be delighted. Can I get you a drink? Yes, thanks. Double gin and tonic. Ah, your usual, Watson? <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, gangway. Don't tell me you're jealous. Oh, of Mallaby. I hope I credit you with better taste in men. He's with the tidings. Defence correspondent and his chum Bennell writes for the Senate, a pair of jaded old hacks. We just might learn something over dinner. Uh, when it comes to the art of the little finger. Something seems to be... My God! She's blown! What? She's gone down! The Redwood has entirely disappeared! The atomic bomb has gone down with her. It's primed to blow up in... We've only a few minutes to get clear. I don't know how long. Nobody here can tell me. A, a few minutes, we think. We're going flat out away from the danger area. The deck is shuddering. Hey, doesn't anyone know how long it'll take that thing to sink five miles? Hell, somebody must know. We're pulling away for all the wood. Faster now, faster! Pull the guts out of her. Hell, slaughter the bits. Hey, maybe we'll make it. How long does it take that damn thing to sink? Christ, hey, doesn't anybody know any damn thing around here? Still going, still going flat out. Everybody looking astern, watching and waiting for it. How can it be sinking all this time? Still beating it for all we're worth. Everybody's still staring aft. God! Jesus! Oh, oh, here's to surviving the bomb. And to those that didn't. Well said, Phil. The crew of the Redwood. Not forgetting our NBC reporter. Ah, uh, our reporter. Our reporter. It's a wonder he survived. A touch radioactive, but otherwise none the worse for wear. Well. Get some reprimand for over colloquial language. <laughs> Which could offend listeners by its neglect of the third command. <laughs> Suppose something came dangling down on a rope from out of space, emitting rays on a wavelength that caused us physical pain. What would we do? I suppose we'd snip the rope, put it out of action. Precisely. Now, suppose some spaceship were to descend upon one of our cities, raining atom bombs... All right. Say, for the sake of argument, there is something down there. You still can't put today's affair down to anything stronger than blind retaliation. Can you imagine any kind of intelligence that wouldn't resent what we've done? Yeah, I resent the word intelligence. The line between instinctive and intelligent action, particularly as regards self-defence... What about it... those fused cables? Precisely. There's nothing instinctive there. And the electrification of that American ship, just static, I suppose... The Cubanor. Do we know enough about the conditions? Oh, for heaven's sake, Ben. A lulling is for babes and nitwits. Well, it's between that and accepting the Bocca line. Look, I'm no Bocca champion. The thing as presented by him sounds as ludicrous to me as it does to you. But he does tie in more factors than anyone else. So, without a doubt, would Jules Verne. <sighs> Surely the Bocca line can't be entirely dismissed. An alien invasion? Come off it, Phil. You're far too intelligent to be living little green men from Mars. Bocker's mistake was to concentrate on the fireballs. It allowed cynics like Benel here to stress the comic strip aspect. Oh, uh, no, no, not me, old boy. Your own editor. Quote, 
This newspaper has managed to exist for more than 100 years without a comic strip, and I see no reason to break that tradition. Unquote. The US Navy certainly assumes there's something intelligent down there. You don't design a special bomb like that in five minutes. Not, incidentally, the sympathetic approach advocated by Dr. Alistair Bocca. Is it really too late for the sort of approach Bocca wants? There have only been two bombs. It was always too late, my dear. Can you imagine us tolerating a rival intelligence on Earth when we can't even tolerate the narrowest difference of views within our own race? Hmm? Bocca's ideas of fraternization stand as much chance as well, a flea in a furnace. I'm Mike Watson, EBC. Dr. Bocca. You have repeatedly urged that we should try to establish communication with the other life form to come to some sort of compromise which would allow us to live peaceably in our separate spheres. Do you believe this option is still open? After what we've done to them? By now, their one thought will be to retaliate. We've only just begun to grasp a form that retaliation will take. Oh, come on, Doctor, please. Uh, Dr. Bocker, are you or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? Is it true that some of your best friends are Bathys? <laughs> Is that why they call you the Bathy Boffin? <laughs> <laughs> we fell down badly somehow, not hearing about the Bocker business until it's practically stale. Do you think he talked to us? Hmm. After that mauling he got from the likes of us. Malaby's right. He's his own worst enemy. All he had to do was to spell it out. Look, there really is something down there, but oh no, he has to throw us in at the deep end with his xenopathetic intelligences. Mm, he might have come up with something a bit more poetic. What's the plural of Kraken? What? Tennyson, dear, the Kraken. Sleeping monster of the deeps. And then to imply that these things are somehow engaged in some sort of deep sea mining. Well, they must be doing something to stir up the ocean bed. Be interesting to know what the naval brass make of Bocca. They never even mentioned him. What? <laughs> I was thinking of that night with Mallaby. You surpassed yourself there, Phil. If I hadn't known you better, I'd never have guessed that was the first time you'd heard Bocca's name. <laughs> I seem to remember you went very quiet that night. Well, it was your show. I could only watch and admire. You know, Phil, if I wanted to be madly jealous, I wouldn't pick Mallaby. Oh, I don't know. I see you more with a dashing young naval officer. <laughs> oh, I see. Captain Winters. To dinner. I'm sure there's a name for this sort of thing. <laughs> so, there I am. We'd just about oh, come sure. to terms with the notion that there is some sort of intelligent life down there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then he comes up with all this stuff about <laughs> discoloration of ocean currents. You see, it only muddies the water. Yes, Would you call Mildred attractive? Hmm. Yes, darling. Hmm. I thought so. It looked mutual. It was meant to look. Um, absorbed. Oh, it did. <laughs> Darling, the position is awkward. If I were to tell you that one of your best friends is unattractive... I'm not at all sure that she is one of my best friends. But she's not unattractive. But then, you and I know Mildred was only the decoy. Your own appearance I would describe as rapt. The manner trustful, the <laughs> eyes a little starry, the overall effect quite bewitching. Mm, the captain's a very attractive man. Well then, we've both had an evening with two attractive people, haven't we? Hmm. Sweetie, I... I'm almost constantly treated to the spectacle of men wrestling with the pangs of temptation. And I feel great sympathy. I don't want them. Which reminds me, if you aren't too sleepy, what did the captain have to say? <sighs> Lots of nice things. Irish blood there, I think. But passing from the really important to matters of mere worldwide interest... He wouldn't let go of much, but... 
Well, they've all lost a lot more ships than they're prepared to own up to. Hmm. What else? Bocker's concerned that the atomic bombs have upset the ecology, whatever that is. Something to do with the ocean currents. They seem to regard him as a bit of an embarrassment. And, uh... Oh, yes. They are testing a secret ultrasonic device, but they daren't let it down on a steel cable because of what happened to that American cruiser and some other research ships we don't even know about. Uh -huh. They've insulated the gear, but are still picking up charges that jump fuses and melt half their instruments. <laughs> There's the stuff, darling. The real Matahari touch. Have you got the drawings? <laughs> Goof. It's only not in the papers because they don't want to start a flap. And the newspapers agree. The advertisers don't like it. There's no need for ordinary security measures. No one's going to dangle a telephone line down into the Mindanao Trench and ask if anyone down there would like to buy some interesting information. <laughs> I suppose not. Anyway, the good news is he's promised to introduce me to Dr. Bocker. Bocker? And when can we see him? I hope to see him in a few days' time, darling. Oh. Well, don't you think I should No. Come but it's sweet of you not to trust me still. Well, darling, I... And now, it's time we went to sleep. EBC. I thought Captain Winters Your said... Your names are confusing, but no, we're nothing to do with the BBC. You are aware that I refuse to give interviews, having learned how one's words can be distorted and held up to public ridicule. I have to say, Dr. Bocker, you really know how to shoot yourself in the foot. I beg your pardon, young lady. You almost had us believing in your xenopathetic intelligences. Then you go and spoil it with all that silly talk about deep-sea mining and carving communications channels. What was it? What I said was Panama that... Canals of the Deep. ...that having settled into their new environment, they have now set about improving and exploiting it. They are, you see, in a position of... Well, no, they are actually pioneers, colonists. I see. And this would explain the discoloration... There is another possible explanation, but I'm afraid even to think it. Which is? That they are deliberately seeking to divert the ocean currents, or even to create new ones. But why would they... God knows. I have my suspicions. The Japanese liner Yatsuhiro, bound from Nagasaki to the Moluccas, sank last night at 3 a.m. local time. 700 people are feared drowned. Thank God for Rose Cottage. Mm. Not forgetting your late Aunt Helen. <laughs> Cornwall is so reassuringly solid and real. I feel safe here. Oh, I know that sea can still wreck good ships, but it isn't freakish or frivolous. Why do they keep on about the Mary Celeste? Wasn't the whole point that she didn't sing? It's what's known as an angle, darling. Translated, it means that nobody has the ghost of an idea why the Yatsuhiro sank. Consequently, she's been classified as a mystery of the sea, and the Mary Celeste was the only specific M of the S that anyone could call to mind in the white heat of composition. It says here, in one of the deepest parts of the Pacific. Do you think this is it, Mike? So soon? Oh, why couldn't we just leave them alone? Well, given two intelligent species on one planet, we can't both inherit the Earth. So you're in favour of sending down atom bombs? Darling, if I happen to mention that autumn follows summer, it does not follow that I'm in favour of getting a ladder and pulling the leaves off the trees. I don't see why you'd want to. I don't. Here's something about metal fatigue. Some new alloy used in the building of the Yatsuhiro here. Mm, crystalline structure of the... Uh, ah, the blinding light of science, yes. Observe the nicer points. Not any old metal fatigue, which might alarm the seafaring public in general, no. Just the fatigue of an unspecified alloy used in one Japanese ship. But it could be so, couldn't it? It doesn't necessarily have to mean that those things under the sea... Ah, no, that's the beauty of it. It has to be something that could be, if only just. And no one can prove it isn't, since the ship in question is now under five miles of water. Mike, this isn't a game. 700 people have been drowned. Oh, yesterday you poured a kettle of boiling water. What? 
So we're no better than ants? No, all I'm saying is... Phil? Phil. My protective colouring isn't meant to deceive you, my sweet. It's intended to fool me. I'm sorry, Mike. It suddenly got to me. A big liner full of ordinary people wiped out without warning in the middle of the night. Until now, it's just been a great story. But it's suddenly all become horribly real. I'm scared, Mike. Mike, they're here. Mm. Mm. What's the... Oh, it's two in the morning. Why can't Harold work out the journey time? They must have stopped for dinner on the way. <gasps> oh. I expect they'll be ready for breakfast by now. <clears throat> Told you, dear, in Cornwall, Rose means heath. Then I don't see why they don't call it Heath Cottage. Morning, Harold. Judy. Oh, it is the right place. I was just telling Harold it couldn't be because you I'm sorry, we really shall have to grow yeah, some. I've explained, but she won't have it. Listen, old chap, have you got any bacon and eggs? So then we have to stop because we had a flat time. Spot a bother on the way down. The car developed this odd sort of ticking noise. Mm. Sounds like our old friend Metal Fatigue. <laughs> our people don't think it's very funny. Right? <laughs> metal Fatigue? <laughs> we were talking about the car, dear. Oh, my dears. You mean to say people down here really believe all that stuff about Metal Fatigue and Martians? That's what they want you to believe. Martians? What, sea monsters, whatever. The rubbish that Bocker man put about. I happen to know he was in the party at university and he's been working for them ever <clears> since. <throat> the whole thing was thought up in Moscow. Yes, it's been a pretty long... Bacon sort of... and eggs. Uh, and of course, the government doesn't dare admit it's the Russians because of all the red influence and it's only a Japanese ship, so it's all right for now. The Russians sank the Yatsuhiro. hero. Well, isn't that obvious? Uh, with what? The new midget submarines, of course. They won't get away with it much longer. People are starting to demand a strong line. No more appeasement. People? People in Kensington. And some other places. Y your food's getting cold, dear. Uh, it's shocking <coughs> how out of touch one gets in a little place like this. <coughs> <coughs> anyway, oh, Harry, yeah. I just saw two public relations spots would be having a field day, conclusively proving that none of your clients' products could ever possibly suffer Yeah, from... but have you seen the shipping shares, have you? Hmm? You people haven't helped either, you know. I mean, you start to scare... Well, you and... don't have to worry on that score, Harold. No, I don't deny we have a few scripts up our sleeves against the day when truth will be more important than world trade. But not a word has thus far escaped our transmitters. The sponsors don't like well, it. Well, good for them. Any more than they like mentions of Hitler on the eve of World War II. Implying just what? Well, just that if you do happen to have any money in shipping, I should take it out and put it into aircraft. <laughs> well, I know you and Phil have been specialising in this thing. Would you have any solution, hmm? Well, then, what good do you think you'll do simply broadcasting, whoa, whoa, hmm? I mean, if there is anything in it, I mean, it'll... If? <laughs> what do you suppose sank that ship, Harold? You can't just bury your head in the sand. <laughs> well, it's safer for my neck than sticking it out. Harold's become quite insufferably smug. He must have a lot on his mind. What? Merit a tuny? <laughs> 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 well, I suppose any girl who can make good with a name like Petunia must at least have something her parents didn't have. You know, in a way, Harold's right. If we had a single practical suggestion for countering the things. But we haven't. But we don't even know what they are, let alone... I'm starting to feel that truth made naked without a purpose is really a wanton. It... I say, that was rather good, wasn't it? <laughs> Where's my notebook? See. It is feared that the death toll may prove even higher than that of the American cruise liner Carib Princess, which sank two days ago. Oh, God. The Queen Anne was the last of the great no, British luxury liners. No, not the Queen Anne. The holder of the transatlantic record. Oh, Mike, that lovely ship. The 4th of September was a full complement of oh, passengers. Phil. Rose Cottage. Heard the news. Oh, hello, Freddy. Uh, yes, just... We want something on these sea monsters of yours, and we want it quick. 
Mike. Look here, Freddy. If this is some kind of leg pull... It isn't. It's a must. I thought you told me to lay off. All that's changed. There's a rumour going round that the Russians did it. And it's got to be stopped. Metal fatigue won't do it this time, so the line is your deep sea menace. Now, you don't want to be too sensational, but you do want to be convincing. Make them believe there really is something down there. <sighs> Now, not too technical, intelligent, uh, man-in-the-street stuff. Um, but here's a menace, founders, completely unprepared, blah, blah, blah. And the, but the best brains working round the clock to give us the means to hit back, etc. Cautious optimism, OK? I'll try. Though I don't know what the optimism is supposed to be founded yeah, on. Never mind about that. Your primary job is to fix the thing in their minds as a fact. Mm. We want you in the studio tomorrow afternoon. But tomorrow? Give us the bathyscope report. Get Phil to top and tail it. And give us a free hand to edit. OK? OK, Freddy. You shall have it. Bye. Looks like we're in business. Freddy wants to put out an updated report. The battle for the deeps. If it isn't already lost. Oh, Phil. We can't afford to let it get us down. Anyway... It's work for us. Well, for me, anyway. Now, you run up to bed, and I'll you just... you think I'm going to let you loose on this on your own? Now, which of us had the atlas? Here, in the depths of the ocean, it is dark. It has always been dark. An eerie place... An awful place, death's own place, drifted deep with the mortal remains of billions of tiny creatures. Nothing, you would say, absolutely nothing, could live here. But is this the most secret womb of the earth? Not barren after all? Is a new form of life, intelligent life, about to emerge from these depths to challenge the supremacy of man himself. Hello, darling. They'd have given up. Sorry I was so long answering. I was busy outside. Did you hear the broadcast? You were wonderful, darling. Freddy was over the moon with your new intro. See, I told you. I'm still not sure about all that florid romanticism, secret wombs and what have you. You're not pregnant, are you? Phil? I'm bricklaying. Sorry, this line's not good. It sounded like bricklaying. It was, darling. Oh. It's fascinating when you get into it. There are all kinds of bonds and things. What is it? Tool shed or something? No, just a wall. It's very soothing. Well, I hope it's cured the stress. Oh, it has. I love the way when you put the brick down, the mortar squidges out at the sides. And... Darling, the minutes are ticking away. I rang to say you're wanted here. Oh, that's sweet of you, darling. But leaving a job half done. I don't mean by me. Well, not only me. EBC. They're being very cagey, but insistent. Freddie suggested lunch at the pub on Friday. Can you manage it? Hmm, yes. I think I'll be able to finish. Finish? Oh, the wall. Phil, there is the other reason, too. It being? The running sand, the unturned coverlet, the dull, unflavoured drops from life's clepsidera. <laughs> Mike, you've been rehearsing. What else had I to do? Couldn't you have taken Mildred out to dinner? I tried that. And she does begin to grow on one the more one sees of her. Mike, I happen to know that Mildred's been in Scotland for the last... Oh, did you say Mildred? Oh, Come I off it, you... darling. <laughs> See you Friday. Bye. We've got Adam Bums, haven't we? Bum to hell, I say, and oh, time has a What, poison the ocean? Well, damn it, the sea's big enough, it'll get over it. Well, if it's that big, how are you going to find them? They keep on going on about the deeps, right? They know where they are, don't they? So why don't they get cracking and sock the deeps good now? I'll tell you why, chum, because our thing's a load of bloody eyewash, yep. that's why. Things in the frickin' deeps, for Christ's sake. Horse marines, Dan Dare and bloody Martians. Look, tell me this. We lose ships, the Yanks lose ships, the Japs lose ships, but do the Russians lose ships? Well, I know they say they've lost all that. I'm not sure the message is getting through. Cheers. If they only knew the half of it. How's Phil? Oh, fine. Everything all right? You too? Fine. 
Oh, you know women. <laughs> they take it all to heart. She only had to hear about the Queen Anne as she was there, on deck, seeing it all happen, feeling what they must have felt. <laughs> the male imagination is mercifully more prosaic. Well, if you're sure she's up to it... Up to what? Phil! Uh, <laughs> what happened to your hands? My wife has been in the country. The start of the bricklaying season, you know. Ah, well, nothing wrong with the old team spirit. Good. Because I've got a job for you two. G and T, Phil. You're not going anywhere until you tell us what's going on. No. I wish I knew. We're losing so many ships, it's hardly worth reporting. But if they're going to start coming up out of the sea and... Out of the sea? Is this something to do with Safira and April Island? Uh, spot on. Who? Islands, dear. Safira's a Brazilian island in the Atlantic. <laughs> April Island's somewhere in Indonesia. The so-called Marie Celeste Islands. Only merited a couple of column inches, but then some of us, you see, don't spend all our time bricklaying. Well, the foreign press printed fuller accounts, which were considered too uh, graphic for British readers. Mm. Coastal villages deserted overnight. No signs of disorder or hasty departure. On April Island, the beach was supposedly scoured with furrows leading from the sea. What your reports neglected to mention was that the whole damn beach was coated with slime. The bathies. They're attacking coastal regions. Yeah. Ah, the very man. <coughs> Dr. Barker. Hello, my dear. And uh, you must be Mike. Phyllis has told me a lot about you. <laughs> Freddy, what the do you I see? wanted to wait until we were all together. You see, one of our sponsors feels that a report, photographs, film footage, some definite evidence of Dr. Bockler's uh, xenopathetic intelligences is long overdue. A man of perception. For the past few years, Shut we have... Up, Mike. And, well, the upshot is he proposes to subsidise an expedition to be led by Bocker. The whole thing will be tied up with exclusive rights and so on. And the Americans are sending a TV crew. Uh, by the way, this is highly confidential. We don't want the BBC to get in on it. Expedition? Where to? Well, well, the decision as to location is in Bocker's hands. Ooh, watch out, Doctor. You're becoming respectable in your old age. <laughs> His stock has recovered quite a bit. And in the words of our sponsor, if you leave out all the outer space nonsense, Bocker scores higher than anyone else. He always was my favourite autographer. I think this calls for doubles all round. Right. Oh, uh, no, 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 Doctor, this one's uh, on the sponsor. Oh, huh? Well, I'll, um, I'll give you a hand. Yes, sir. Look. If you'd rather not take this up. Nonsense! Of course we're going! Do you think subsidise means we can get suitable clothes and things on expenses? Even a diet of lotuses can pall. I hope Bocker knows what he's doing. Did he happen to mention how he hit on Escondido? Oh, I expect he devised a probability system all his own. Only I can't help feeling we're in the wrong hemisphere. The action's all in the Pacific. We had the attack on Grand Cayman. Wasn't that gruesome enough? Well, it was all over before we got there. Not a single eyewitness report. OK, so he's brought off one near miss. I'm still not convinced he's playing more than a high class. Eeny, meeny, miny. The locals don't look too worried. It's an unmistakable air of manana hanging over the place. Well, they rigged up the lights for Ted and Muriel. <laughs> Once they knew the Yanks were paying. Leslie, the crack boom song! Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have a request. OK, this song is dedicated to Muriel and the beautiful island of Escondida. And I call it the Baffled Boffin. <laughs> no offense to uh, Dr. Bacher here. All right. And don't forget, crack boom! boom. Good. Oh, I'm burning my brains in the back room, almost setting my cortex alight. To find a new thing to go crack, boom, and blow up a xenobath oh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Poor Leslie, back room crack I've boom, for the heaven's sake. Thermals. You see what happens in a climate and like this? Softening sets in without the victim even knowing. I've mugged up on technical journey. I say we give Bocker a time limit. I'm One more week to, to produce his phenomena. If not, oh. well... My well, I said a week and I'll stand by it. Though it'll most likely be fatal. Find a new thing to go crack. Boom! And blow up a Xenobath Oh, yeah. And blow up a Xenobath Don't 
darling. Stop worrying that moon and come to bed. No soul. That's the trouble. I often wonder why I married you. Oh, darling, it's late. It's nearly, it's nearly one o'clock. On Escondida, life laughs at clocksmiths. Wasted, darling. You mislaid your notebook. Remember? Pig, I hate you. Sweet, sweet Diana, take me from this man. Oh. See, a ship, an isle, a sickle moon, the sleeping plaza. I want it. It's one of the things I'm putting away to remember. Why don't you see and hear what I do, Mike? It might be a bit dull if I did. Both of us crying on Diana. I have my own gods. I suppose you have, though they are rather obscure. And some to Mecca turn to pray, and I toward thy bed, Yasmin. Oh, no,、oh, Mike. <laughs> Listen, Mike. Do you think it must be? Mike, they're coming. Ted, turn your lights on. Down by the waterfront, lights, man. Where's my recorder? I can't see anything. There's some men pelting towards the harbour. Must go down there. I must see what. Phil. No. Phil. Give me the key. No. No. Oh, well done. Now we're locked in. Have to break down. Phil, please get away from that door. Don't be a fool, Mike. But, Phil, it's the job. It's what we're here for. No, it isn't. Why do you think we've had no eyewitness reports? Because all the damn fool reporters rushed out to see what was happening. Look. They're getting pushed back into the plaza. Leslie, Leslie, what is it? Who knows? Can't get through. It's coming this way, whatever it is, and making mucho panic. Johnny's gone for the plane to see if he can't take a shot at it. Leslie, have you seen Muriel? No, Doc. I'll keep my eyes peeled. People are kneeling. There's a priest in a long black robe. What are they firing at? I still can't. Oh my! They're like giant tanks. Test, test, recording. They look like huge grey slugs, like elongated eggs, halved lengthways and set flat face down, about. Thirty foot long, drab, leaden colour. Bullets seem to bounce harmlessly off them. Three, four sea tanks now moving into the plaza. The crowd forced back towards the church. Look, that one's bulging. They're all doing it. A dome-like excrescence, a semi-opaque, viscous substance, growing faster now, inflating like a balloon attached at the neck. It's going to pop. No, it must be five feet in diameter. Looks like a huge, repulsive bladder. It must pop soon. It's just, just detached itself, wobbling through the air like an overblown bubble. Oh, it seemed to split open like it's burst into bloom. Thousands of long white whiplashes raying out in all directions. They, oh my God, they, the, the tentacles are sticking to, catching hold and. Coiling round and dragging them, people are being dragged helplessly across the square. Mike, he's got Muriel there. Oh God! And there's Leslie. He's, he's trying to pull her. Oh God! The man tried to pull a screaming woman away. Has become fastened to the. Being dragged along together, people struggling like flies on flypaper. There's a relentless deliberation. It's as if it's all happening in hideous slow motion. The tentacles drawing them in. The, the sea tanks releasing more and more of these disgusting bubbles. And it looks like another one's about. <laughs> Oh, 
It's all over now. Ah, here comes Johnny with the plane. He's going to have a crack at him. My arm hurts. I'll get a doctor as soon as I can. Mike, there's something sticky. Is it blood? No, darling, I, I don't know what it is. It's all over everything. You're shaking. I'm sorry. I can't help. Oh, Phil. Darling Phil, to see Muriel and Leslie and... It could have been... There, there. Don't cry, Nicky. It's all over now. Never under heaven was there such a concentrated pole. Look at the cobblestones. All coated with slime. This is where the people were praying. If I believed in God, I should be tempted to think he proposed to teach me a lesson. That he was saying, you think you're so clever, little God yourselves with all your atoms splitting and microbe conquering... Very well, I'll show you one or two new things and see how your conceit stands up to them. At least we know they're not invulnerable. Their rifle fire doesn't seem to bother them. Yes, this tank was merely fractured. Careful, Mike. It's hollow. Completely empty. Contents must have been gelatinous masses confined under immense pressure. When the shell cracked, they exploded and disintegrated. <sighs> I'm sorry, my dear. Hence this miasmic, fishy smell. Muriel, Leslie, and we were lucky not to lose you. I brought you here. I'm afraid I've showed very little consideration for your safety. Don't think like that, Dr. Bocker. If it had been me, I'm sure Mike would never have blamed you. No. I know who I should have blamed. No one made us come here. You offered us the chance to come, and we took it. You're very good to me, my dear. And thanks to Mike, we do have our first specimen. Specimen? That bit of the tentacle thing, when I cut it off, it just dropped on the floor, wriggled a bit, then sort of curled up. And oh! Something very odd about those tentacular forms. The fundamental's obvious enough. It goes back to a type of sea anemone. But could they have been built up on the basic pattern? pseudo -colenterates. The things are used, you see, but not like weapons in the usual sense. More like snares. You mean the purpose was to catch and collect people as if they were sort of shrimping for us? <laughs> shrimping? Yes. I do wish you hadn't hit on that particular analogy. What? I was just saying millibrachiate tentacular calentrates. Oh. Come on, Mike, look at it from our sponsor's point of view. We thought we were promoting a scientific expedition, not a vulgar stunt. Stunt? My wife almost... Get it, Mike. Only last night I heard some comedian suggesting that Dr. Bocco's pseudo-life form might explain a long-standing mystery concerning his mother-in-law. <laughs> On EBC. I very much doubt it, but if it was, it will stop, I do assure you, contaminating the airwaves. <laughs> but the fact is that purchase of our product might be regarded as a tacit endorsement of the Bocker theory. Oh, yes, but your product has already been linked with Bocker in the public mind. Obviously, Mike's report will play down the more sensationalist aspects. What? People dragged, kicking and screaming through the streets? Well, for God's sake, it happened! And if we don't hurry up and smash this damn blockade, we're going to run out of raw materials... And there'll be no bloody product. Now, Mike... Oh, sorry, I forgot. Not in front of the children. Mike, forget it. I've heard of English summers, but... Good God, what's that? What does it look like? Well, obviously, but we've got a perfectly good one indoors. If I'd expected to come and sit out in a draft just so that your compost-minded friend... That is an arbour. Oh. 
After all, when one is bricklaying, one has to build something. No, yes. It's a very nice arbour, as arbours go. I just wasn't expecting an arbour. I thought it was... It was uh... not a kind conclusion to jump to. Mm. Darling! What are you doing out here? You'll catch your death. I was wrong, Mike. I don't feel safe, even here. I can almost see them scuttling down there on the rocks. It's the fog. When you see it in the light of day, it'll be hard to believe a place like Escondida even exists. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe Bocca's some impish sprite with the power of hallucination. <laughs> he keeps hinting that the real threat is down there. Under the sea. Where we can't even... Darling, come to bed. It's so dark. <gasps> Keep your voice down. I didn't know there were caves down here. There's a lot you don't know, Phil. The walls are all wet and slimy. <sighs> the contents must have been under immense pressure. Is this where all those people disappeared to? Mike? Where are you taking me? Shh. You'll find out soon enough. instrument we call the Xenobar. What's that growing out of its head? Looks like a big bubble. Like some sort of repulsive... Mike! It's going to burst! All right, darling. I'm here. Phil! Phil! Mike! Oh, Mike! Uh, shh! Shh! It's... it's all right. It's just a bad dream. It's all right. I'm here. The news agency Reuters has reported widespread attacks on Spanish coastal towns and up the coast of Portugal. The number of casualties is as yet unknown. They're going to let millions of people die? Unconfirmed reports What's a few million? Women will go on making the good the loss. Darling, what's wrong? Oh, nothing except I'm sick of all the shams and the humbug. I'm pretending that the lies aren't lies and propaganda isn't propaganda and the dirt isn't dirt. Oh, there'll be token arrangements, aircraft standing by on call, but they'll always come too late when the men and the women have been bundled up and dragged away by those horrible... Oh, I could... But a pattern is beginning to emerge. I'm sorry. The respected oceanographer, Dr. Alistair Bocker has suggested that extensive flooding on the Indian subcontinent and the dense fogs now engulfing much of the northern hemisphere isn't there anything else on the wireless the of the polar ice I'll see. and the dramatic rise in to find a new thing to go crack Whoa! Phil someone must have got hold of the song from Ted Phil I've given her a sedative. She must have complete rest and a change of... I thought she'd got over it. That damn fool song must have brought it all back. You too, I think. Well, I'm all right. Doctor, that business on Escondida, that night when the... Well, it all happened so quick. She couldn't have seen much. You saw it all, didn't you? You dream about it? It has given me the odd bad night. More than that, you go over it again and again in your sleep. You're particularly concerned about a woman called Muriel being torn to... You mean I've been talking in my sleep? Rather a lot, I gather. But... No, it was Phil. Phil was being torn yes, to... Yes, you keep waking her up to tell her. And that's why she... Oh, God. Now, listen. 
I'm going to give you the address of a friend of mine in Harley Street. I think you should go and see him. The government is actively watching the situation. The exact steps that will, if necessary, be taken will be dictated by the nature of the emergency, if one should arise. The recent wave of attack... Always the bloody same. Treat you like a lot of ruddy kids. Same during the damn war. Bloody home guards all over the place waiting for bloody parachutes and all the bloody ammunition all bloody locked up. I'll, I'll have another one of these. Looks like you've had enough. I'll be the judge of that. All right. I told the wife I was going to London. Cheers. Don't want to worry her. No, baby. Ever since that business on Escom. That bloody Bucker was on the radio the other night going on about how the sea level's risen seven feet last year. Well, we don't need him to tell us that. We've had the old of Exeter underwater. Uh, Navascon 333? Rose Cottage? Hello? Uh, Mike? Freddy? Good. Grab your hat and record it. There's a car on its way for you now. Car? Not Phil. You all right? You sound a bit worse for wear. Oh, it's late. It must be... Good God, it's 5 a.m. I've been trying to reach you all night. Look, Freddy, the truth is I've been so strictly incommunicado, I... I seem to have lost my wife. Lost your what? Wife. Wife, Phyllis. I was up in town when I got back. Oh, I, I, th- I thought you said life. No, 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 Phil's all right. She went off with Bocca. That's no way to break the news. What do you mean went off with Bocca? Well, last I heard, they were laying bathy traps in Donegal. Car will take you to London Airport. A- airport? Ireland, my dear. <laughs> Wait a minute. Freddy. 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 Enemy sighted. Stand by all units. All right, chaps. Let him have it. In the background, you can hear the ultrasonic drone. This first test of what we hope will prove a decisive weapon in the war of the deeps. Through the fog, I can just make out the grey, slug-like shapes of the sea tanks. And even as I speak, they're cracking open. They're splitting and exploding. Cheer up, Doctor. You can't deny they took a beating. We ourselves have a tradition of taking beatings and then winning wars. We've merely countered their most visible line of attack. Yes, one might even say their decoy. But you speak as if you think they might be more intelligent than us, Doctor. We simply don't think in the same way. In war, you generally have a rough idea of how your enemy thinks, but with these brutes... You had your suspicions... They were driven by the same urge that drives us, kill or be killed, yes. I even predicted their methods, remember, Phil? Yes. Those maritime currents. I should have spoken sooner, but who would have listened? It's too late. I don't understand. (laughs) This isn't a dream. It's here, all around us. The fog... They're deliberately melting the ice cap. Mm. That's why the sea. They're trying to... drown us. Never since Noah was building his ark has there been such a well-regimented turning of blind eyes. It cannot go on. Soon the long Arctic night will be over. Then the eyes that should never have been shut must this... open is the Prime Minister speaking. The Battle of the Deeps has been won. British and Irish troops, in an unprecedented show of cooperation, have succeeded in repulsing a sustained attack upon the West Coast Let us look at this victory. We, a maritime people, have lost the freedom of the seas. These things, whatever they may be, have not only succeeded in throwing us out of their element, but already they have advanced to do battle with us. 
The glaciers which run down from the Greenland ice cap are carving. An awesome sight, the great ice cliffs cracking and slowly falling to smash in the sea, throwing up vast mountains of spray. Mike Watson, EBC News from a helicopter over the west coast of Greenland. A weapon against which we have no defense. The melting of the Arctic ice cap. The effects of warm currents diverted onto pack ice will increase rapidly, very likely by a geometrical Most progression. Most experts now agree that the melting of the ice caps is the work of xenobathetic intelligences, though some still argue that it could be caused by man-made pollution. The British people are entitled to ask, what is the bomb for, if not to bomb the bus? Along the Atlantic and Pacific coast are now effectively fog-bound. There are flood alerts in Texas, Florida, and across the Midwest. Terror from the deeps has sunk our ships, snatched men and women from our very shores, and now threatens to drown us. The Netherlands and much of Eastern Europe... Europe and volunteers are working round the clock to shore up London's flood defences. Governments insist that all necessary steps are being taken and that there are, as yet, no plans to evacuate the city. The Prime Minister emphatically denied the reports the government has already made its own travel arrangements. Talk about panic buying. They're scratching one another's eyes out for things they wouldn't even been seen dead in last week. Mm, it's the same in the city. You could buy a shipping line for a few bob, but a single share in aircraft. Look, there's a man loading sacks of coffee into the boot of his roll. That's the way. Find a nice self-sufficient hilltop and fortify it. Leave the rest of us to... Out! Oh, excuse me. Oh, hello, Mike. Darling, have you seen what they're asking for cottons? It's criminal. <laughs> Certainly beats the January sales. Sandbags. Harold and I are getting out on Friday. Harold says if it floods, then it's every man for himself. He could be right. And now, Wimbledon, absolute washout, two years on the trot. What's so feeble is that they don't just stop them doing it. Well, stopping icebergs is probably pretty difficult. I don't mean stopping icebergs. I mean stopping the Russians from making them. Oh, are they? Making them, I mean. But of course... Surely they can blow them up or something. The Russians? Or the icebergs? Well, I meant the icebergs. But, Tuni, uh, are you quite sure the Russians are behind all this? I must say, I find it very odd indeed that people seem to be so concerned to justify the Russians. <clears throat> Is that the time? Uh, Phil, darling, our uh, meeting. Sorry, Tuni. Got dash. Give my regards to Harold. Will do. <laughs> well, she's right, of course. About the Russians? No, about getting out. The government certainly thinks so. Behind all the soothing noises, you can hear the frantic packing of suitcases. Oh, they'll be the first to abandon ship. But whatever made them plump for Harrogate? No shortage of hotels and a reassuring elevation, 700 feet above sea level. Bocker says it's happening even faster than he thought, and that the real trouble will come with the next spring tide. Even EBC's talking about moving north. <clears throat> they want volunteers to man a London station. Top floor of selvages, so if Oxford Street floods, we'll still be high and dry could get very bloody all the same. You want to stay, don't you? Well, I suppose it's not every day you get the chance to report the end of the world as we know it. And it's not as if we had children to worry about. Oh, Phil, I can't ask you to stay. Well, apart from conscience and loyalty and all the proper things, I don't see much point in running. Unless you know what you're running towards. Attention, everybody. Please disperse in an orderly fashion. This is an order. Everybody get off the streets. There is nothing to see. Clear the streets. Mike Watson, EBC, here on the Waterloo Bridge. From here, I can see the water crawling just below the embankment wall. London's hurriedly improvised flood defences are about to be tested to the limit. Behind me, you can hear Big Ben striking the hour. 300,000 sandbags have been used to extend and shore up the walls. The government assures us there's no risk of it topping the new parapet. It's the pressure that's the source of anxiety. A vast crowd gathered on the embankment, ignoring appeals by the police and military to keep moving. The mood is strangely calm. People don't appear anxious, merely curious. 
The spring tide, due at any moment. Still rising. The water now lapping at the sandbags. The crowd has fallen silent. They're moving back now. Soldiers and civil defence rushing bags to reinforce where spurting jets of water, shoring them up with timber. But it's... Some of the sandbags are shifting. Over there. The wall is breached. A gap has opened up through which the water is pouring as if over a weir. The pavement's already washed. The water now... Oh. The wall is crumbling. Caving in before my eyes. The water pouring in a great muddy cascade. The blood sweeping all before it. Trees and rubbish and... God only knows how many people down there. Getting reports of extensive flooding across London and the South East. Downriver from Limehouse is getting it badly. Lambeth, Southwark and Bermondsey engulfed in a great muddy pool. So many places are reporting breaks in the wall, we're losing track of them. The flood line, now reported north of Oxford Street, moving up towards Broadcasting House. Bob Humbly, BBC... The good news is Broadcasting House has flooded. Hey. So we get the run of the airways? Ah, uh, not quite. The bad news is there's going to be a merger. Merger? With the BBC? Yeah, the government has declared a state of emergency, putting all radio communication under direct control from Harrogate. So, having beaten its own indecently hasty retreat... It's down in the store. Looters. Not much left to loot. Our mob have already stripped the shelves. We'll be safe up here. Top floor's like a fortress. All the same, things are falling apart faster than anyone predicted. Look, the thing is, nobody has to stay. They're laying on a helicopter to evacuate us to Yorkshire. And how about you, Freddy? Oh, to be honest, Mike, I'm tired of wasting my time like a shipwrecked sailor. Besides, there's Lynn and the children to consider. The tide is in. Top of Nelson's column jutting above this lake that was once Trafalgar Square. The water slick with oil and scum and flotsam. What's the use, Mike? They'll never let it on the air. Well, you never know. There may yet be such a thing as posterity. Or maybe I'm just trying to salvage. Yes, salvage. <laughs> yes. What is to be saved? Art treasures? Call me a Philistine, but we seem to do all right when we lost the Cro-Magnon art for a few thousand years. Would we have done so if the knowledge of fire had been lost? Lo, all our pomp of yesterday is one with Nineveh and Tyre. I see you're still on intimate terms with other people's muses. Whose was that? Well, I'm not sure you'd class her as a muse at all. More of a bent, perhaps. Mr Kipling's. Oh, poor Mr Kipling. Of course he had a muse, and she probably played a jolly good game of hockey. Ooh, catty. <laughs> However, let us honour Mr Kipling. I wonder what Nelson makes of all this. No, I should think he's in his element. Oh, and important people. Who is important? Those who can trace their bloodline back by a list of names on paper. No doubt they will be considered to have prior claims to survival. Certain eminent intellectuals, perhaps, on the strength of honours earned in the days when they still had fresh ideas. How many will be among the elite because they still have ideas remains to be seen. As for the ordinary man, much his wisest course would be to enlist in a regiment with a famous name. There'll be a use for him. Come off it, A.B. It's a long time since you even looked like a cynical undergraduate. For a time, it looked as if something could be done to save the world we know. Soon, I think, I'll be able to feel... Well, that's gone. How can we make the best of what's left? All the same. I wouldn't say that coming to places like this does me much good. Mike, let's go away from here, now. I can't see us getting far in this old dinghy. 
Well, we can always call Freddy and ask him to send a helicopter, though I don't somehow see much of a future for us in Yorkshire. I'm afraid we may have to get a little tougher yet, darling. How about you, A.B.? Where will you go? Uh, I've been summoned to Harrogate, although I'm... Listen, there. Around Piccadilly, by the sound of it. We're out of range here, but we'll have to run the gauntlet back to Oxford Street. I think we'd better stick to the backwaters. The towers of Manhattan like frozen sentinels in the sentinels. as the glittering water laps Two around their more floor. like. Some radio ham on top of the Empire State. The lines to Harrogate are down. The EBC apparatchik was in the middle of dictating our latest call to all loyal citizens when the line went dead. Sounds ominous. Fisher, German bite. Visibility zero. BBC five. putting out old shipping forecasts. EBC London. Mike. Thank God. Freddy, I've been trying to raise someone up there. Listen, Mike, this isn't social. It's disinterested advice to anyone contemplating a leap from the frying pan. Don't. Oh, what's the trouble? I mean it. Hang on there. Both of you. But, uh, Freddy. Wait a minute. It's okay. No monitor on this, I think. Now listen, Mike. We're overcrowded, underfed, and in one hell of a mess. We're in a state of siege if we haven't already lunged into full-scale civil war. For God's sake, keep this under your hat, but stay where you... Freddy? Freddy! <laughs> Phil? Phil, what is it? <clears throat> I haven't been able to get tough after all. I don't think I can stand this much longer. Please, Mike. Take me away. But where is there to go? Even if we could... The cottage! It wouldn't be so bad there. There'd be things growing, not everything dying like this. Oh, look at it, Mike. We never did anything to deserve all this. Most of us weren't very good, but not to have a chance. If it was something we could fight, but just to be drowned and starved and forced into destroying each other in order to live. And by things we've never even seen. Things that lurk in the one place we can't... I can't. But even if we made it to Rose Cottage... I can't stand it, Mike. I shall go mad if I have to sit here doing nothing while a great city dies all around me. I'd rather die. All right, darling. We'll go. At least the fog's lifted. Where are we now? Must be somewhere around Weybridge. It's hard to identify anything from the map, especially at night. What is it? It's a net. A big one. Can you lift it? It's a flare. You can see the whole floodplain. Get back where you come from, chum. We only want to get through. To get home. We don't want to stay or ask yeah, that's for... that's what they all say. Where's home? Cornwall. <laughs> You've got a hope. <laughs> and I've got my orders. It's get back or get hurt. So get moving. But we've got enough food to... Shh. Don't advertise the fact. Okay, we'll get back. Yeah, well, you got sense. Then not try again. I don't like shooting people that act reasonable, like. But there's others not so particular. Just keep going, chum, all right? Sorry, darling. It's a pity to go back now. More of a pity to get shot. Can't be helped, Mike. We'll try again somewhere. Third time lucky, perhaps. This time lucky. He shot to miss. Vigilantes. My guess is there's a hostile ring around London. If we don't know where we are, how do we know where we're going? We don't. We're just keeping going, like the gentleman said. It seems wise to get out of his territory. Look! There! In that tangle of branches. It's a boat. Well hidden. Give me the flashlight. 
I'll take a look. Be careful. There may be someone... What was that? You don't want to know. Looks like a body. Woman. Shot twice. Here, give me your hand. Uh. There we go. A sea-going motorboat? Well, kind of high in the bows, so I should think it's meant for sea. It's small, though. Don't be irritating. You know perfectly well what I mean. Could it get us to Cornwall? With our knowledge of the things, it's more a question of could we get it to Cornwall? We'd have to sail back through London and out into the Channel. A long shot, Watson. A very long shot. But what's the good of having had so much luck already if we don't go on using it? Look at them, Mike. They're like white rocks. Blinding white crags in a sea of... Oh, I'd be the first to concede the aesthetics of icebergs if they didn't happen to be slap in the middle of the English Channel. Whoa! Steady. <laughs> Look, oh. it's still there. Oh, thank God. Oh, we did it, Mike. We did it. <laughs> It's even stopped raining! Mm. <sighs> Uh-oh. Someone's been here. Several lots, by the look of it. I expected the windows to be broken, but... Oh, God, look at this mess. It's not so bad. They were obviously after food. It looks like they found what they were looking for. The lard is bare, right down to the last bottle of sauce. The drum of oil, the candles, even the coal. Oh, to come all this way for this. Spend the winter grubbing around for roots. Slowly starve and freeze to death. If the marauders don't get us. Phil? My God, what have you done? What are you? Look, Phil, I'm sorry if I was rude about your arbor. It's all right, thank goodness. What's all right? The food. I didn't want to tell you until I knew it was still here. But there's an entire storeroom. Not got much intuition, have you, Mike? Did you really think I did all that bricklaying just for fun? You... You mean so... <laughs> the arbour? But that was ages ago, before the flooding even began. But not before they began sinking all those ships. It seemed to me that it would be a good thing to lay in stores before things got too scarce. And you bricked it up yourself? Well, obviously, I didn't want the locals to know. There's a whole van load in here. I hope you're not going to be stuffy about this. Stuffy? Well, there are people who think it's more ethical to pay black market prices than to take sensible precautions. <laughs> well, yes, I can see several angles to the thing, but it would be churlishly ungrateful to mention them now. Oh, darling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm coming to life again, Mike. Me too. Though it isn't going to be a picnic. I don't care. I don't mind working hard when there's hope. It was having no more hope that was too much. I mean, let's face it. The human race has come through a lot worse than this. Nothing is really new, is it? Once upon... Mike! That's it! Where's my notebook? Monitoring of foreign broadcasts suggests that the Chinese may be using ultrasonic weapons in the battle for the Mindanao Trench. This is EBC News. Mike Watson, back on the air. With all other communications down, it is impossible to assess the extent of the flooding or rumours that the north of England has been engulfed in civil war. We are still trying to trace Dr. Alistair Bocker and to confirm reports that the sea has stopped rising. We do not, cannot know how much of our world remains or how much can yet be saved. 
Millions have drowned or died of hunger and disease. There may only be a few million of us left, but now, more than ever, we count. Nothing is really new. Once upon a time, there was a great plain with forests and wild animals. The ancestors hunted there. Then one day, the water came and drowned it all, and there was the North Sea. We've been here before, and we got through last time. The Crock and Wakes by John Wyndham was dramatised for radio by John Constable. In The Crock and Wakes, Mike was played by Jonathan Cake and Phil by Sarah Todd. Freddie was played by David Fleishman, Dr Bocker by Russell Dixon and Captain Winters by William Oxborough. Malaby was played by Malcolm Hebden, Bennell by John Branwell and Tuny by Catherine Hunt. Harold was played by James Nickerson and Leslie by Tom Clark Hill. The Russian translator was Leonid Osokin and the music was composed and played by Paul Cargill. The Crock and Wakes was directed in Manchester by Susan Roberts with special thanks to Nandita Ghosh and Melanie Harris. Music